Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. We've got two games to recap. The ALDS brought the drama yesterday. Baseball came out to play big time, weird rules, extra innings, big comebacks. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us today. Day. My name is Jimmy in California. We have Trevor Plouffe behind the desk, producer BBD, and sitting next to me at the table, the birthday boy, Jake Storielli. Hot. Did you wake up feeling extra pretty? Uh, <laughs> Trev laughed at that. Uh, yeah, I woke up uh, my second sweet 16. I'm enjoying it. Uh, yeah, no, Ooh. there definitely was a mirror, uh, me looking at myself in the mirror last night, little extra love handle this time of year, uh, body kind of looking like Christian Vasquez, facial hair was in a mm. tough spot. So I shaved it up, cowboyed up, dust myself off, getting ready for this Red Sox world series, man. So I'm, uh, oh my God. I'm doing well, uh, baseball, baseball, it's so hard last night. What a. Like, what an hour span that was from the end of Red Sox Rays uh, jumping in. We were live streaming with our guy Joe's into the White Sox uh, Astros chaos last night. So that was a good time. Uh, feeling good. Uh, me and Trev are working on a new workout plan. We're both uh, we're both not feeling ourselves right now. But speaking of, Tasty Trev, what's up, dude? Mm. Jacob, happy freaking birthday, man. I'm so happy you're in my life. Can I get some cakes in the chat? Mm. Wow, cakes, cakes in the chat. Oh, I don't know if we've ever had cakes there's in the cake chat. There's cake in the chat. Babe. Wow, look cakes at that. Chat. Some peaches, too. You know, baseball hot in the streets. That That's only fitting that baseball got hot in the streets the night before your birthday. Because I know mm. you were getting hot in the sheets. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yes, sir. It could have been me. It could have been me. I forget. Now. Jake <laughs> runs hot. I am very hot. How was the stream last night? I tuned in for a little bit. I love Joe's. You guys, you guys Joe's is them. awesome. Uh, the stream highlights should be out now. I think I was watching the start of those. Mm -hmm. Tom does a great job on those. Uh, the stream, Trev, we went early. Well, actually, we didn't go early, but we started with the Red Sox race. So we were alive for all that drama. And I, I just watched our reactions to that. It's pretty funny because I just let out a what? <laughs> Like that it's, old E bombs crazy. world where I think it's Australia or someone one of the, oh, oh my it's god a dumb video. <laughs> Did you just what? say E bombs world? Yeah, it's yeah an old, shout yeah, out. Remember that old viral old, video? Yeah, where that was my like, that was my sixteenth birthday. Like, WTF, mate? Like that was us <laughs> after <laughs> that video. So many people have no idea what we're talking about. Mm. Um, but yeah, the reaction to that, and then the grand all play Tom Hallion strike three calls mm. the fucking Kane dude and then it came to a screeching halt and the last five innings of the Red Sox or White Sox game <laughs> were just like fucking so boring I know that's kind of that's, that's how it works man uh, we were saying before the uh the show they were down five to one in the third series the season was over until it wasn't Man, it was funny going through the the box score of that today because we were streaming and we were having fun, being silly, and it was like, wait, has this game just turned off? And uh, I guess shout out to Christian Javier and Ryan Tapera and Aaron Bummer. You guys really took the wind out of all the bats, so good for you, but you also kind of took the wind out of us a little bit. Built it up for a fun day today. Four games. Ooh. Are people going home? Are we getting game fives? Regis. So good for your birthday. Four baseball games, Monday night football. There's, I think there's preseason basketball. Off-season oh. plans, yep. Yeah, I talked about Yankees. We have four meetings manager. on the docket. Four meetings. Yeah, sexy. Ooh, you love meetings. I hate meetings, Trev. These are fun <laughs> meetings. We're doing, yeah, okay. we're doing... Anything you want us to pass along to your boy Dan? I think we're talking yeah, we're to him. Doing his employer review today. Any 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 notes? I, He's listening. To, my, probably listening to this right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my review of Dan. Okay. okay, here we go. He's an absolute juggernaut. I love him. Hot. Wow. Hot. Huge. Well, all right. So we have the two games to review. We'll preview. So some people yesterday were getting upset about our lack of like individual previews. There's four today. I mean, I think mm. it's going to be a very quick, like maybe minute on the clock preview of the four games because we got to talk Ooh. about the weirdness that happened last night. 
And then the post-game comments, there's some more stuff that happened. So baseball's bringing the drama yesterday. They're bringing uh, – they're front-loading their week, too. Monday, big. Do you have Burns? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Please hit me. I have officially placed my order from Starbucks. So I'm ready. Mm. But they want me to meet at the door. No. Ad. Yeah. Well – Opposite ad, I'm only ordering Starbucks because Dunkin' was too far away. Double oh, ad, half a double. negative. Mm. Half a negative, We'll take both positive. of you. Uh, How about one of us gets sponsored by Dunkin', one of us gets sponsored by Starbucks. And another negative like, ad, mm. Uber Eats is, is bullshit, oh, and boy. I hate using <laughs> Uber Eats. I think Uber's dead as a company. Here we go. Okay. Damn. Ah. As our, as our <laughs> they need, sales they need to get self-driving cars, in. that's it. That's the only saving grace, pairing up with Apple um, and getting some self-driving cars. Well, Uber Eats is ridiculous because you never know when your food's actually going to arrive. So sometimes it's been like 40 minutes, but you get a, not a singular yeah. update, and then you get scared in order, f- and then they both arrive. Jake's done that. I've done that. <laughs> I've never done that. That's pretty I love the unique. double order. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And it shows. Oh, Jakey. It's just water weight. That's all it's ever been. Want to read something? Yeah, well, the first, the first burn is going to be brought to you by Manscaped. Don't burn yourself in the pubic region. Just trim it up with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. Mm. It's trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Mm. That's a lot of people to trust. That in. is a lot of people. So many people. Uh, the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped is a fastball right down the middle for you to take your grooming game to the next level. Included is the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker, the Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Formulations trimmer, formulations, and two free gifts. Jake, do you, you like the Nose Hair Trimmer? I need it. it it's become a necessity. Uh, once, you, once your first integer starts with the three, those nose hairs. I think what it is, I'm not a big science guy, uh, Manscaped, but I think when your hair stops growing this way, it starts growing this way. It starts coming out yeah. the nose. People say that. So you got to trim that up. Your ears, your nose, your eyebrows oh, get long. Tom Hallion was trimming it up last night. That was He awesome. got hairy ears for sure. Uh, the package also comes with the weed whacker to chop your worst weeds up top in both your nose and ear. There you go. Uh, crop preserver, crop reviver. They even threw in two free gifts. Are you kidding me? Mm. This includes their shed travel bag to keep all your goodies stored comfortably. And the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs are also included and will bring your boxer game to the next level. It's something I mm. hear and dear to my heart. I didn't learn about anti-chafing cream. It's like mm. my biggest uh, thing. Like every summer I kind of post it on Instagram. And like if you're a young boy going to the beach wearing board shorts, mm. like go look into Body Glide or anti- Because I ruined a lot of my summers. How we... Not mm. being able to walk after a couple days in the sand and the ocean and wearing mm. wet shorts all the time. So I'm big into that. Mm-hmm. Get 20% off free shipping with code TALKING at manscaped.com. That's code 20%. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code TALKING. Use manscaped. Use manscaped to enter October with Big Stick Energy. Your balls will thank you. Jake, oh can my you? God. We'll catch you. We'll catch you, then. Is, is that the ad read? Big Stick Energy? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, sure that's is. in the read. All right, Jake, burn this wild Ooh, extra inning affair. Gonna be the more wrong music remix. That's good though. That's fun music. But it's talking baseball vibes for sure. I have all of them it's on. Been a uh, minute. Since the burn that. music is on the talking Yanks soundboard mm. for me. So wrong one. It's a big game three up at Fenway. The Rays would pitch their Nordic Prince Drew Rasmussen. As Nate Dog Evaldi would try to make it regulate for the Sox. A beautiful meadow for the Rays early as Austin. It's a two-run ding-dong. But Schwarbo cuts the lead in half with one of his own. And he's having fun tossing the ball. Fist pumping love that. Bottom three, Kike and Devers. Devers and Kike. RBI singles for both of them. And then Kike, do you love me? Are you riding off of Pringle Fairbanks? Solo dong, and it's good fortitude by the Sox to make it four to two. It stay that way into the eighth. Isn't he lovely? 
Isn't he wonderful? He goes oppo taco over the monster. God, he's a kid. He's awesome. The best ever, the GOAT. Randy Arena with the RBI double. We are tied up at fours. Bunos Cantos in the Commonwealth. Full pension piv getting his Avaldi on four inning shutty and extras. Does the Harlem shake off the mound? Ray's bullpen is showing out too. We're in the 13th. Kevin Kiermeyer knock off Trevor Plouffe. It is high, it is far, it is off the wall. Yandi will score. Oh no, Renfro boots it into the bullpen. Runners stop at second and third. Piv gets out of it, and if you've ever watched out a baseball game, you know what's happening next. Christian Vasquez, fly me to the moon over the monster. It's a walk-off in Fenway. They take game three. Six to four final. Good stuff, Jake. I for, I forgot about the Schwarber making the play, and then mm-hmm. uh, waving and taking his hat off, and that's so fun. It was ten out of ten athlete humor, dude. That's how you kind of unnerve the crowd because they're mad at you at yes. first, but by doing that, it's like a quick reminder of hey. I know I suck. They're playing me at a position I don't play. Mm. Don't blame me, but I made that one. And then if he boots another one, they're going to give him some leeway. They're like, ah, but he knows he's, you know, it's not his position. It's just a great move by a good guy. It's just that's uh, charisma. He went over the crowd. Mm. That's something. I mean, you got to been there, done that before in the playoff atmosphere to be able to pull something like that off. Bobby Dahl back in. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Promise you that. Got to have a little bit of a resume. And it's the old, uh, like, everyone was thinking it. <laughs> like, everyone in that stadium was like, oh, another one to Schwarbo. Is he thinking about it? Turns out he was. He made the play, and he had some fun with it. So, yeah, that was uh, 10 of 10 athlete humor. You, you, you can tell the, whoever the infield coach there was like, hey, next time you get a ground ball, Let's get the momentum mm. working. Stay down. Get go ahead and start running towards first base, and then we can get the flip because that's exactly what he did. Different. Give him a chance to catch it, please. Um, because the first one was hilarious. It was almost comically bad. Man, his flip, his home run was also huge. I think that also gives him a little thing there because the Rays go up early, and you're like, what? No. And then first pitch or second pitch of the game for Schwarber. And it's such a pop-up home run. It's such a Fenway homer. Good for him. This was – so this game obviously gets nuts, and we're going to talk a lot about the the late innings later. Uh, this was a huge game for Boston. This is Nate Evaldi. They're one on the mound at this point. Uh, he looked good. He was getting a lot of punchies. Five innings, two earned. Uh, Cora with a pretty tight hook on him. Uh, Cora season The Red Sox Man they were mashing Um, 7 for 7 Getting their leadoff hitter on And not just getting on Not drawing some walks Not a hit by pitch Hits Hits That actually put this game script The pressure turned back on Boston This game probably should have been 6-2 Red Sox or something like that In the 7th or 8th inning to the point that the Rays rally, uh, Wander, he's unbelievable. Same with Randy. Um, and, hey, the Rays bullpen did their thing, man. Um, and so did the Red Sox outside of Robles that led to the the wild craziness at the end of this one. Pavetta found his curve again. Ooh. He was nasty. And the one guy that gave him a good at-bat was Kiermaier in the 11th. He ends up striking him out. They try to go for the hit-and-run on the 3-2 pitch. Not hit-and-run, but they put Randy in motion on the 3-2 pitch. Pavetta goes dangerous with the – or not dangerous. It's a, it a great pitch. I mean, nice pitch. Kev takes it. It's ball four. But he gets a strikeout. But that was the best at-bat, so this is the Schwarber home run. Or mm. He didn't even That's start Schwarber running. Homer, yeah. It's just uh, lands in the second row. <clears throat> was the wind blowing out? Because that – 
Ball kept going. I know. It didn't look like a home run at all off the bat, and I was shocked when it got there, but whatever. Um, the I mean, should we just jump to the Kiermaier play? We can talk about Pavetta a little bit. Let's get let's let the guy have his shine. Mm. He was He's fired up. Man. I love, you know, talk about the performance, great. But when the energy there, man, like I you focus on that because you know he's in that situation. And as soon as he gets that strike three call or a swing and miss to end the inning, I mean, he leaves his body. That's not him. That's mm. just straight up the crowd entering your soul and making you do whatever you do. Coming off like that, that won a lot of people over in Boston. If he hasn't already done it with you know saving the bullpen, like that, showing that type of type of emotion in that type of game, I mean, that's what endears you to the fans, man. A lot of like, people. It was so cool to watch. Game two, Hawk got a, a lot of. I mean, obviously, he deserves a ton of credit for shutting them, shutting the Rays down. But now, what Pavetta's done in game one and game three, and I know game one he gave up runs, but yeah. he saved the bullpen. And now game three, that gets that done. So Pavetta has been uh, kind of a, a main cog of this. Seven Ks, dude. Yeah, I mean, he should have given up the one run, but that the rules, the rules, the rule, I guess. And I mean, hey, f- four inning shutout uh, is arguably going to go down as the best pitching performance in this series. <laughs> And the, and the curve, man. Top of the zone curve is something else. That's that's not many people have that. He's found it. Man, curve is nasty. And he's throwing cheese, too. Like he, He's got so much adrenaline. That's high T right there. When you talk about high T, mm. full pension piv, high T. He was running into the dugout and then like all fired up on the field. But then he went down the gauntlet of high fives to the other entrance of the dugout to make sure he got all his teammates as well every time. It was really cool. Love that. It's like the Red Sox have fun, and baseball is a fun sport. They do. Oh, I do disagree with something you said in your burn. You said Wander's a kid. I disagree. Oh. He's on. Believable. Yeah. He yeah. looks like a seasoned vet. A lot of times people say that about rookies. You know, oh, he's a rookie, but you wouldn't know it by watching him. And like Randy last year, you mm. would. He like you could he was amazing, but it was still like something raw about it. Mm. There's nothing raw about Wander Franco. Everything looks poised and in control. He made that play where, you know, Luplo did have to make the scoop to get him to help him, but it was extra inning play. And he made the pick at short in the throw. Like it was Batting practice. Like, there was nothing on the line. That kid is special. It doesn't act like a kid yes. at all. How old is he supposed to be? 22? 20. He's, He's 20. younger than Dan. It's a lie. Okay. It's not a lie. I'm not calling out ages. I'm saying he doesn't act like it at all. I was just being hyperbolic about that. He does. 20? Yeah. Crazy. In a moment like that, like you're talking, Jim, this is playoff baseball, extra innings. Didn't give a shit. Didn't give a shit. And then the oppo home run from him. Mm-hmm. That was- I love the yellow. I think I've said that mm. before. The yellow just does it for me. I don't think there's like there's like maybe this much yellow in the Rays uniform. Not anymore. They're opening it up. Wander's like, ye- yellow's our primary color because I said so. All right. Do you guys even know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I I I like no one, when no one cares. I like when the Rays guys lean a little more into the baby blue um, than the Ooh. yellow. But um, hey, uh, Cash kind of finally deploys his bullpen. I mean, we see Kittredge and Fairbanks in the, I mean, third and fourth innings, and man, uh, Fairbanks gets jumped by Kike, but so was everyone. I think he, he was he seven in a row hits at one point yeah. or six. I mean, yes, he was seven. Insane. Um, everyone else did their job. I mean, uh, Fire Eyes and Whistler, Shags, uh, big two innings from D Rob. He's he might be the only guy that's out for tomorrow. I know we'll talk about that in a little bit or today. Excuse me. Um, Ray's pen did their thing And so the Sox, man, Brazier comes into another big spot He's been lights out for them um, Man, Austin Davis comes in And what's kind of one of the moments of this game That gets overlooked That's, man, Cora empowering that guy Five ERA on the year 
not necessarily your lights out electric stuff coming out of the bullpen. He gives him the lefty matchup, um, and he does four pitch walk, uh, and then he gets B Lau, which by the way, Wander was on deck for that, and his numbers as a righty hitter are insane. That if he doesn't get B Lau there, we could be talking about a three run shot over the monster, and and that changes everything. So, um. A lot of moving pieces in this one, um, and the fact that it comes down to that crazy Kiermaier off the wall, Renfro. Are you still running hot, Trev? I know you were running hot, hot. <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> I want to say I, I, Austin Davis and the way Cora has used him is, or at least used him last night, is great. He's against lefties. He's nasty, but you run into you run into a problem if you have to keep him in longer because he's not good against righties. So it'll be interesting to see if he tries to keep him forward that end of the inning, get you the last lefty out type of situation. But um, yes, I was running hot. You're running hot. And you know, I, I said my last tweet, I tried to do a meme, mm. my last tweet of the night, I believe. I don't know if it's considered a meme. But you know, we're reacting to the game in real time. You see that play. It seems so stupid. It's obvious when they slow it down what should happen. Kiermaier should be on second base. Runner should score. And then everyone becomes a rule expert 30 minutes after the fact when they dig the rule up and all that stuff. So it's like everyone needs to chill out. I get that's the rule. We all get that's the rule. That's what it says. Passing came out. You know, let, let, first, actually, passing, I delete a tweet. Always got to mention that. Always. It got me hot. I don't know. I mean, how could you not get hot? Either side is like, what just happened there? Yeah, so for anyone that didn't watch the game and just mm-hmm. coming to us for a recap, Kiermaier hits a ball uh, with the runner on base tied up in the 14th inning or 13th, whatever it was. It hits the top of the short wall in front of the Red Sox bullpen and then bounces off the ground and then run, Renfro's running to field it and then it hits his body, like his leg or his... Big-ass body. Yeah, his leg mm-hmm. or his uh, waist or something and ricochets back over the wall. If the ball stayed in play, there's no doubt Yandy Diaz scores. Uh, they were sending him. He was like four steps in front of third, and Renfro didn't even have the ball. Renfro's got a good arm, but he's flat-footed. He's on the track. They're sending him. He's scoring, if you argue with that. I haven't even seen anyone take that aside, so he's scoring. The Red Sox catch a break because the rule says if this happens – each runner gets two bases from the last base they occupied the, from the base they occupied at the time of the pitch. So they were he was at first. So the runner on first goes to third, the batter goes to second, at second and third. So they they applied the rule perfectly. Then the rule goes on to say only if it's incidental. You can't a thrown ball would move the runners from two bases from where they are at the time the ball is thrown. So if Renfro accidentally like threw it, hit Kike's back, and then went over, they would have scored, you know. Or if he kicks it on purpose out of frustration or anything on purpose. So they applied the rule perfectly. And when you go and you watch other times this rules come into play, like there's so many different ways it can happen. So I, I guess if they were to say it's just a judgment call, that leaves it up to like too much of the ump's discretion, which they like their black and white rules, so they just made it. It's a terrible break for the Rays because the runner's yes. scoring, uh, and mm. and he didn't do it on purpose, but it, they they get it's it's so odd to benefit the team for misplaying a ball. I don't even know where to go with this one, man. If Renfro catches that. Clean turns and fires, makes his best throw. Yandi scores. Oh, he's not even throwing so to him. So he home. gets rewarded he, for making a bad play. He throws the ball to the cutoff man towards third base. That's exactly what he does if he gets that ball. And yeah, he didn't do it on purpose. We all know that. It's just, it's just an extremely bad, bad break for the race. And when you battle and you do something that you're supposed to do, like you come through in the clutch and then that gets taken away from you, I mean, that's... That's tough. And I, I want to say, the people who are like, the Sox won by two runs, so they still would have won. Like, get real. Get real. Get real with yourself here, okay? that What's that called? Butterfly effect or something? Everything's not going to be the same if he's, if he's on second base and they're ahead by one run right there. Who knows what would – they might have scored 10 runs and you're mm. – 
and your made up world that you're saying they still would have won by one run. Uh, the Rays in my made up world would have scored 30 runs that inning. Right. So there. Cal, uh, Michael K refers to that as the fallacy of the predetermined outcome. That that's much more well spoken than what I just said. Mm. It's it's not like a phrase. I think like Michael K gets credit for that those words being put in that order. But, you know, it's the you know, the, the what you're saying, you know. If yeah. Kiermaier, they score and Kiermaier goes to third, what's to say there's, you know, now there's a runner on third, so they pitch him differently, and now there's a pass ball, a wild pitch, and and he's and he scores. Or what's to say they don't, they keep Patino in? Or what's, yeah, obviously yeah. you cannot play that game uh, there. It's, so. it's part of the beauty of sports, and it's part of the ridiculous of sports. Kiermaier hits one of the shortest fences in the game, but one of the deepest right fields, top of the wall. And then Vasquez, I mean, he goes over the massive wall and he's about a foot over the monster. And that's uh it's the beauty of this disgusting sport that we all love. And uh yeah, man, it's uh it's setting up for another wild one today. Like I expect expect more of the same as um, you know, I think there's one scary pitcher left in this series. It's Tanner Houck. So it's are are the Sox going to deploy him today, or if they go down, do you save him for five? Um, I, I would think the Sox save him for five. But we know that's not Cora's game, man. If Cora's got a chance to win, he's going to go for the win. So I I don't know. It's uh, it's going to be a fun one. Um, division rivals. If you're the Rays. What I Ooh. said, what I said when we previewed this game was the best thing for the Red Sox was to win the game by one run or two <laughs> runs and make the Rays use a lot of bullpen. Well, they did that, plus took them five extra innings. Yeah. So the Rays are in bad shape here. How many guys do the Rays have left that can go multiple innings? That can go three innings available for tomorrow's game, today's game. I. I don't think they ever approach it like, let me get three innings out of you. So I, I don't think they're as in bad shape as maybe we make them out to be. You know, I think that, like, Jake, I think you alluded to it. D-Rob might be the only guy not available today. And even then, he's going to be available. It's the playoffs. I think D- They can pitch back-to-back days. I think D-Rob's the only D-Rob guy. D-Rob might be the guy. He's, I think he's yeah, the only D-Rob guy might out. Be out. I mean, it's. I think Boz is back in play for this game. I mean, Kittredge, Fairbanks. Shags, Whistler, Fire Eyes. It's all hands on deck. It's an elimination game, um, which we saw that on the south side. Like, I think Drew Rasmussen might be in play. He threw 33 Ooh. pitches yesterday. Um, I, I can't promise you he's out. So uh, the key for the Rays is a, a you don't want to see the bad man. I think if, if the Red Sox are up, I, I think Hawks coming in because uh, we've seen Cora. Every playoff series, when he gets a chance to go for it, he's going for it. Um yeah, they're start they're starting McHugh tonight, <clears throat> mm. so we'll see how long he can go because he didn't pitch last night, right? I uh, just got postponed, so that helps the Rays a ton. Oh, that's Astros. Astro. Oh, they already that's postponed White that Sox. game. C Rosie was saying they were going to do that. Yeah, White Sox postponed. Other Sox still. Playing. Other Sox still playing. Sox. Yeah. I think that you know. I'm actually happy Sox that it happened too. though. Can I tell you that? Okay. I'm happy that weird thing happened. I'm happy the Rays actually lost last night because I want I don't want to see them roll through the playoffs. Like I think mm. if if they get past this series, the narrative is a lot different on them. It's like we don't talk about them as some novelty team that like they put together and you know has seemingly broken baseball. We talk about them as like a grindier ass team coming back from a difficult loss like that, having to win another one in Boston and then, you know, closing out at home. I think the narrative yep. completely changes for that team. Mm. Yeah. I'm interested with, uh, cause we'll talk about white Sox in Houston in a minute. That Are we done. I think we're done. Yeah. The stream just crashed stream dead. Okay. Keep it going. Yeah. I, I think the thing that's, that's different here than the white Sox Houston game we're about to talk about is, um, White Sox Houston, it doesn't feel like that changed the outlook of the series. This game felt like it did. I I think today's game, if it goes back to Tampa, I mean, it's it's Rays up, but Boston, I mean, they it's in their hands right now. They got a game in Fenway to end this series and 
all that beautiful stuff Trev said about the Rays could be out the door instantly. Yeah. And then we're going to be talking about Boston being another, it's another one of those years in Boston where they weren't supposed to do anything and they proved everybody wrong. Mm. That's their narrative. That's all they do. You know? I'm rooting for the Red Sox to win and then the Astros to win and then the NL to win. I figured it out last night. <laughs> Astros to what win. What about the premonition, bro? You have to keep with the premonition, James. Yeah. No one said it's going to be easy. Maybe it was just a passing premonition. Mm. I don't want the Rays to go to the World Series. So, I uh, It's funny. We had just had like Red Sox fans saying that we're biased against the Red Sox fans. Rays fans saying we're biased against the Rays fan. Biased against both. To be as honest as yeah, I can, they're right. I'd, I'd, Red Sox win. I hate the Red Sox, but I like the way they go about running a team better. So then the Astros to beat the Red Sox. I don't really care about the Astros, and then the NL to win. Boom. Mm. That's my hope, not what I yeah. think is going to happen. I'd like the White Sox to come back. Maybe it's a possibility now. Maybe Jake will burn that and let us know. Mm. Brought to you by Dugout Mugs. We've been sitting with our Dugout Mugs every live stream, drinking out of them, yeah. cheersing for every home run. And, boy, did we get some home runs in this game. I forget how many. Three? Two? There's a couple two tree. There's a couple home runs. If you've been following us for a while, you know that Dugout Mugs has been with us from the start, and they are riding with us throughout the entire playoffs. They're letting you get a knob shot shot glass for free at dugoutmugs.com slash talking. Knob shot shot glass for free at dugoutmugs.com slash talking. You just got to pay the shipping and handling. And they're giving away free products all playoffs long. All you have to do is film yourself drinking from any Dugout Mugs product, post it, and tag them on social media to be entered to win. Go to dugoutmugs.com slash talking to get your free knob shot shot glass today. Today. All right, Jake, what happened in this wild one? Today. Mm, Let's say that your wild one. Burn, Jakey Burn. Houston Astros and Luis Garcia bring their broomsticks to the south side as the White Sox hope their season doesn't cease with Dylan on the bump. Eloy, the other big baby, RBI single, it's one nothing Sox, but don't mess with Texas. Tucker, I barely know her. Kyle hits a two RBI double and then a two RBI home run with a little Jake the Rake Myers in between. It's 5-1 Astros. They're sweeping harder than when you know mom's coming to visit. Are you a tits man or a yes man? Yes, Monty Grandal. Two-run shot after he should have struck out looking. 5-3 Strohs. Garcia on Garcia on Garcia. Yimmy relieves Luis to give up the homer to Lurie. It's 6-5 in the south side. Go crazy, folks. Good times. But the Strohs, this kind of gets missed in this. They answered back Bregman with the RBI single to tie it at sixes and bottom fourth. This is when the chaos happened. Jose Abreu with the RBI single to make it 7-6. Here comes Grinky, our guy out of the bullpen, Hall of Famer. Yes, Monty, rounds one to first. Let me bounce right to left and let your shoulder lean. Leans into it a little bit, running up the first baseline. Umps. Nobody's out. The run scores. It's 8-6. to six. Make it 9 after the Eloy infield single. 6-9. to nine. Pretty nice, BBD. It would stay that way into the 8th after a couple dominant bullpen performances to pair up Bummer and Javier for the Astros over there. But in the 8th, that Andrew Vaughn is one fine piece of ace. RBI double. Garcia again. And then TA7 icing on the cake. White Sox double them up in a game they needed to keep their season alive. 12-6 final. Where's my mouse? Oh, boy. I, I was hoping you were going to go with Veronica Vaughn. I knew you I were. I could kind of sense it. it. That Veronica Vaughn. She's hot. Hot in that movie. Hot. I thought. Wow, wow, wow. The Astros locked us up. Mm. Mm. But then the yes man gets that pitch to stay alive, hits a homer. They take out Garcia mm. in the middle of his at-bat against Garcia. 
2-0 count, and they bring in Garcia to replace Garcia against Garcia, pissing off all three Garcias. Yeah. You're going to take me out yep. in the middle of that bat? You're going to bring me in in the middle of a 2-0 count? You're going to switch pitchers on me mid at bat? Everyone's mad. Dusty just, like, ruining yeah. everything good about Garcia ball. So, Laurie hits a homer, and you're tied up. What did Dusty say about that? He had a plan. Yeah, he probably said I had a plan. Dusty had a plan. He had a plan. And then Grandel runs into the ball on purpose. The guy with his cane. Ooh. I mean, a lot of spooky stuff happening in, in the south side. It was rocking, too. Some of those visuals of the crowd last night were, like, incredible. And it's not – I mean, that's – people talk about Fenway. They talk about Philly. About tough, and, and and the Bronx, obviously, about tough places to play. Fans, you know, saying shit to you. Southside is also on par with all of those tough stadiums to play at. These people are relentless, and they do love their team. I'm happy to see them show out the way they did because they, the White Sox have very very passionate fans, as you can tell. Man, it some of those cut screens looked like a crazy soccer crowd. That was awesome. Um, yeah. And yeah, I heard I heard some it was their first playoff home game in like 12 years or something like that. So, something shocking for the Chicago White Sox. Um and man, we forget stuff like that. Like that means so much to uh, White Sox fans. Like to have that um and by the way, their season on the line against the Astros, the favorites to make it out of the American League. Um good for them for battling. If they make this a series or somehow come back, I mean Tom Hallion, who was one of the stars of this game, and I don't even mean it in a bad way. The way he was punching dudes, I'm for it, man. That's entertainment. That's what sports is at the end of the day. But, man, that missed strike three on Yasmani, and then he hits the home run. They had a 5-1 lead. Like, that's that's pretty close to game over. Instead, it was not. Mm -hmm. um, And if you're the Astros, you don't. A, I very much believe in game paths in baseball, and that obviously changes things significantly. But, you know, you still had a chance. This game was 6 6, and then, yes, Monty throws his shoulder into one. If you're an Astros fan, you probably had a bad time last night. Um, I'm sorry, but hey, good for the White Sox. The Sticks came out to play, and now a little rain delay, so they'll have. Bullpens get to get fully, healthy. Fully rested in a do or die game again. That, uh, that could be something. Who's going to be starting game four? It's Ro- Rodon for the White Sox and Urquidy for the Astros. I wonder. I know they own him, but I think Lance Lynn will be full rest for tomorrow, so that opens up the board for the White Sox a little bit. Very interesting. Yeah, you know, they might change. You're right. They might change now. I don't I don't know. The game's postponed officially. Official, yeah. official. Rodon, I mean, he's not stretched out. He went five innings, you know, last four times out, only pitched four times in September. Um, so they are going to need to have some people behind him, and this really helps the Sox out. Holy crap. Yeah. Probably both teams, I guess, that extra day. Now you can line everything up the way you want it, no matter what. Mm. So does that push the travel day back? Like is – I have no idea. I don't think there will be a travel day. So yeah, they're just gonna play in There's a Houston. They're playing Chicago and then they go straight to Houston for game five the next day. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday will be the f- game five, yeah. Uh big news after the game was uh Ryan Tapera, the White Sox reliever, in his post game press conference said this. It is what it is. Uh they've obviously had a reputation of you know, doing some sketchy stuff over there and you know, it's just uh we can say that it's a, a little bit of a difference, you know. I think you saw the swings and misses tonight compared to, uh, you know, the first two games of Minimate. But that's not really the story, you know. Um, we come here to play. You know, we're going to compete. We're not even going to worry about what they're going to do. Um, all we have to do is execute pitches, and they can't hit them anyways. Oh, my God. Mm. It is what it is. Uh, mm. uh, interesting. To para. I was telling him to lead my answer. What's that? But don't don't he's like, I'm gonna lead with this to the answer <laughs> yeah. to answer your question, but also don't talk about what I just said. 
Yeah, you can't it's really drop that. Deal. That's not the story. Like, once you do this, you do this. But um, I don't know. This sucks. I was telling Jake this because the Rays broadcast announcers were like, the Red Sox got to be doing something. Uh, their manager cheated in the past, and they're all over these pitchers. I don't know if that's exactly what they said, but everyone was tweeting that about the Red Sox, uh, especially game two. I got so many tweets, and then game three, and then to have the like the Rays broadcast hinted at it. I didn't hear what they said. But then this, like, baseball's got to fix this. And the I don't – because I don't know if the Astros are still cheating. I don't know if anyone's still cheating. I don't know any. I don't know anything. But anytime you you get hit hard, or you or you or something, you don't like the way they are swinging or their approach, and and that's the lingering doubt. Is is I do believe like really bad for growing the game and and getting people invested and believing the outcome. So I it sucks. I I don't know what the Astros are doing or not doing, but. There's also a part of me, Trev, that thinks kind of the athlete brain. Like, they won at home. They lost on the road. For them, it might be easy to be like, well, of course we lost at home. They fucking cheat. It was nothing to do with us. Like, reassurance in a way. Yeah, I guess. I I guess that's what he was going for. I'll say this. I don't think anybody's cheating using a camera in center field and relaying signs in real time. I just don't. That is not happening anymore. it's, It's just not. Okay, so I understand the resentment. We talk about this so much. I understand the resentments towards the 2017, 2018, and possibly 2019 Astros. I get it, dude. And the core people are still in the lineup, and you can not like them because they didn't have a real punishment, blah, blah, blah. But to come out and say that with no like data or information, because the data doesn't even really back it up. I mentioned this today on Baseball Today. You know, there are 22 swings and misses in that game, 15 and 17 in the first two games, respectively. Like, not a huge, crazy difference. Um, What I do think, though, Jim, is that people are more in tune. Organizations are more in tune. can Can we find a tip on this guy? And I think we have people that's jobs are probably to do that. And, Definitely. you know, I don't know where that lies with you as a fan. You know, like, is that... In my opinion, if a player is getting that, it's obviously not cheating. That's gamesmanship. That's what you're. That's what happens in the sport. If you're setting up a guy to sit there with the computer and maybe have some sort of program to scan the video to see differences, I don't like that. I do think that is cheating. But if a player is doing it himself, that's just regular old baseball. So I think there's more in, of an emphasis to finding stuff like that. We've already seen Hendricks do it. We've heard that the or excuse me, the, someone, the Yankees had it on Hendricks that we found. I have a sequence episode about that. That was really easy. And then we also heard about Eovaldi. It's, I think teams are just trying to find a way. Because if you do have a tip, think about how, how much that benefits you offensively. I think that's kind of where the game is. I, I, Tapera and telling everybody that the Astros are still cheating at home, I think is a really, really bad look. Yeah, and that's that's the part that sucks the most because – there's just there's no end to the conversation. There's no win. There's there's the I don't know. I mean, that's you know people like Jim said people were saying that about the Red Sox and their broadcast and they're oh seven for seven in their leadoff hitters and it's like well I don't know those guys seem pretty dialed and they're having good at bats but like there's there's just no end to the conversation. You can't you can't prove anything and especially. You know, people tied into the Red Sox expectation this year, and now they're overachieving, and core is the difference, blah, blah, blah. You know, that sucks. And then, yeah, same, you know, same with this Houston White Sox game. And and I think the part that does suck for us is, like, we know that teams are willing to do anything to get an advantage. Like you said, you know, we, we don't know where we stand on if you have some computer program that can overlay – Every starting pitcher's fastball and then their curveball, and s- the computer can point out three differences. Like, yeah, that w- kind of sucks. That doesn't feel like baseball, right? Um, no, that's bad. And Jimmy talking about I'm, when I'd want to make sure I'm anti that, right? And you know, Jimmy, they're always flashing multiple signs because teams just live in fear now. Like, that's that's not great. It's kind of cool when you're watching at home and you see the catcher flash the two, and you're like, oh, here comes Uncle Charlie. Get ready for it. My that's favorite part. That's of Jimmy's baseball. favorite part of the game. So yeah, I mean, baseball needs to find a way to attack this better. Um, 
And I, I think the part that sucks, you know, we, we cover the game. Is there still a chance there's some sort of funny business going on? Absolutely. It's just to what degree? Like, I, I think we all agree there's nobody doing what the Astros did with a live camera feed banging something. Is there a chance teams are doing whatever they can? Always. Always. It's just where's the line and we have no idea. So, hey, we'll maybe we'll find out in three years if teams are doing funny business. I know... Uh, Trev's fashion icon, uh, Ben Ben Verlander was de- defending what the Strohs were doing on the internet last night. Hey, what? So, um, he you defending what? He, he dropped a uh, you know, a, a lot of teams were doing what the Astros were doing last night on on the internet. Um, so. I mean, I don't know about a lot of teams, but yeah. there was other teams doing shady stuff. Yeah, we talked about this. I mean, we don't need to keep going into it. This you know, two freaking awesome teams <laughs> playing great ball, and now, you know, I don't know. Joe's McFly said it best. Uh, the series doesn't start until the road team takes a game, except he slaughtered that line, and it was really funny because it's just such a such a good, bad baseball line. And basketball, too, I guess. Hmm. 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 I'm like all over the place. Dude, I now. think so I'm I'm coming up on this. Uh, let's see if I'm in this preview. I mentioned this on the live stream with you guys. The uh, the documentary they're making about like the MVP race that I they had me be part of. I believe the they didn't tell me I was not talking about it. I believe the premise is that I'm like chatting on a Zoom with Ben Verlander. That's like the premise of it. Is this the thing that uh, Scruggsy sent over? I don't know. I didn't see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like Scruggs, cool. by the way. Me I too. uh He he was doing the radio broadcast of the Ray Sox, and I was tuning into that for a little bit. And he's good. I like his voice a lot. He's improved a lot and quickly. He just started doing this last year. Do you hear the story that Good Justin plan. Verlander was going to throw out the first pitch of the Astros game uh, with Mattress Mac, mm-hmm. and then all the Astros players said no, and they told they said he they don't they didn't want him to do that, so then it didn't happen. Mm. I didn't hear the story. Wow, because he hasn't been with the team all season while rehabbing and getting surgery, so they were like, no. Where's he been? Home. Doing whatever he wants. Yeah. Okay. Fucking. Because he's a free agent after this year. Like next year. Does he get a ring? No idea. Can't throw a first pitch, don't get a ring. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think. He'll get a ring. He'll get a ring. All right. Three games tonight. Braves Braves host the Brewers. Is that the four o'clock? It's the one. That's the one. It's starting, yeah. A couple ten minutes. minutes. Oh, it was uh was White Sox won their time? Is that the difference? They were three thirty, so it was probably two thirty their time. But what do you got on Brewers Brewers Braves? Trev's last ion. Ion Anderson. Anderson versus Freddie P. This series is going five. Like I, I almost feel bad. Yeah, I almost feel bad. Like you kind of don't have to watch this game. Uh, but it's probably gonna be great baseball. Um Braves back at home. That crowd's probably going to be pretty rowdy, huh? Atlanta home game. Monday at 1, I'm interested. Would, Columbus sh- Day slash Indigenous yeah, that's, People Day. And everyone works from home now. I think it's going to be rowdy. It's What is it today? Indigenous People Day. Well, it's Columbus, Columbus Day, Day, which was a national holiday. Then they were like, wait, let's reread the history books. Columbus was an awful Bad person. Dude. Awful person. We talked I think about that's this. nobody's birthday. It's my dad's birthday. Well, it's not always on the 11th, right? It's just like the f- second Monday. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not always because my dad's birthday's tomorrow. He's named Christopher because he was born on Christopher Columbus Day because when he was born, it was like was that a holiday. It's like if it landed on a Wednesday, yeah, cr- you got off work holiday. So now they're giving it to the indigenous Columbus, people as guy. well. Like in Australia, they have a national we're sorry day to the aborigines. So mm. I, I knew that. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a good name change. Good job, America. So I don't know how the crowd's going to be. I'm interested. They're kind of if if they come through and they are crazy, they've kind of come up against a bad schedule and timing for their first home 
playoff game, and I'm even more impressed. If they don't, tough time. One o'clock on a on a. I think the. I think they'll be there because you have time to plan for this. This is their first home game. Like people are like, it's true. They want to be there. I think they'll show up today, and this is it's going to be good baseball. Uh, C Rose asked me this morning if th- this was the day where the offenses show up and there's someone breaks out. I don't think the offenses are going to break. I don't think these two teams are built to break out. Mm. Braves a little bit deeper in the on the offensive side, but I think these are just going to be close games. I just think they're going to be like good kind of. Pitching, defense, strategy, big hit type of games. Like, I don't think there's going to be one team that runs away with any game here. And that's, you know, that's going to make for some good baseball uh, the next couple of days. Game five, Thursday night. See you there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of, right? Passon just had a funny quote tweet. Jesse Rogers tweeted, uh, regarding sign stealing, Tony LaRusse's idea – to the league was to require the runner on second base to turn towards center field <laughs> when the sign is given to the catcher, then turn back. The idea was ignored. And passed and quote tweeted it and just said, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Outside the box. There's no way he really said that. Come on, man. Oh, Let's blindfold the base runners. Tony had to say that as a joke. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking in jest. You know, and also to go back about the catchers hammering like 50 signs when no one's on base, you know who doesn't do that? Yachty. Remember watching him? He was the one doing two. Yeah. One. And that is fun to watch and be like, here comes the here comes the breaker. I I if I was to run a broadcast, I would have it whenever they're giving basic signs. I would have it split screen or zoomed in uh, all the time. I think it's the most compelling part of a game. Is it's it's basically like when we do back alley bats and we talk to the camera and everyone comments they love knowing what we're thinking and about the pitch. Well, you can do that in baseball. Mm-hmm. It's, it's there for you to understand. If, if the catcher throws down two and the pitcher shakes it, well, now we know he doesn't want to throw his curveball there. Oh, I wonder why. It's the best part of baseball, in my opinion. God. Now you have me wanting pitchers mic'd up in spring training. I would love to have a pitcher be like, I'm about to blow this like mother effer away. Yeah. It's 2011. Uh, uh, one more note before we leave. The White Sox are dead because they just pissed off the Astros. The one thing you don't do is say you're going to, like, get the Astros. The Oakland tried yeah. to play big bad justice person last year, and the Astros just fucking stormed through them. Um, so... Tapera just killed any momentum the White Sox had, in my opinion. Tapera and the rain, White Sox lost all momentum from game from winning this game. Astros are going to come out pissed. 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 I think the only team that has the ability to do that and come away clean, Jim, is the Dodgers. Mm. Not the White Sox. We got to win. All right. Is that it? Uh, no. Um, we haven't talked. I mean... What hopefully is the game of the night. We talked Rays Red Sox a little bit. It's it's gonna be whoever has the arms and care, if the Red Sox care to win or not. Um, Colin McHugh getting the start. That's fun. Uh, Giants Dodgers tonight. Trev's Dodgers uh, going against Trev's Giants. Alex Wood versus Max Scherzer. Dodgers big favorites in that one. I don't know how you you lay your cheddar. <laughs> don't. I know it's Scherzer. Just stay away from that. Okay. Sprinkle a little on those Hibido Hiantes. <laughs> they just got to get one. Late night Le Mans. They just got to get one. Um, So that's going to be the fun storyline because if you're the Giants, I think if you have a chance, if this is a tied game in the 6th, 7th, empty it. Bring out Rodgers. Bring out Doval. Do anything you can to push one across and get that win because you just got to get it back to the Bay for Logan Webb in game five. Um, yeah, I'll see you Thursday night. Or if, see or if, Sh- same exact. Or if thing. Scherzer drops Dick on you tonight, it's a scary tomorrow for the Giants. Scary. See you, see you Thursday at nine Eastern. Okay. When are they running that? You said so. NLDS the other side. Oh, it'll be an early day. Well, Thursday at five Eastern. Oh, that's nice. That's beautiful. Game five of Giants Dodgers would be a five o'clock Eastern start. No, Braves Brewers will be five, and then G- Dodgers Giants will be Damn. nine. You got me so excited for a second. It's a trap. Yeah. 
All right. Well, there you go. There you have it. Thanks for joining. Sorry that the live stream cut out for everyone that joins live. Everyone that listens on the podcast app. You're you're golden. You're golden. DVD had to do a lot more work. That's all. So thoughts and T's and P's. Send him kisses on Twitter. Please cumpleaños, Jake. Jake sucks.